Good morning, YouTubers. Today we're doing a feature wall. Let me take you around the back. By the way, like and subscribe. Let's get ready to do the tri stack walling. That's the next bit. So, finally got the cladding done. Now we're sticking this stuff on. Yeah, so this is slate verta, which is the closest colour to the Cassatra slate. So it should all blend really nicely. Um, so what I've got is, I've got this Seeker primer from Marshalls. It comes with the tiles. And then you get this EBT, which is the glue then to actually stick on the back of the tile. So yeah, I started off this morning because it would have been tricky putting my brush back and forth in here. So I got an old Daz thing there, poured the actual primer into it, but started burning holes in the bottom. So that was no good. So I just borrowed this from the customer. I can stick the um, primer in there, paint the wall. So what we've got to do first, we've got to paint the wall with the primer, paint it on the back of the tile, and then glue this stuff to that. So the procedure is when you're doing it, when you're gluing it, you don't glue right up to the edge. You're pretty much only gluing in the middle three strips. Because when you push it against the wall then, it'll move up and it'll come a little bit higher up. Last thing you want is anything coming over the top. Let me turn around so you've got that side of it. Yeah, you don't want any glue coming through there. So yeah, really simple procedure. Paint the primer on the wall, paint it on the back of the towel. It's like doing normal tiles I was doing down here. Primer, 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 sticks everything like glue. So I just had a cup of coffee delivered to me. I'll drink that, then we'll start priming. So each tile comes that shape. What I've just done, I've trimmed off this edge here. Here's one I prepared earlier. Love that, Blue Peter. Yeah, so I squared this edge up so that I'll stick nicely up against the back of the wall. Um, right, let's prime one up and stick it on. So when I'm painting this stuff on as well, I don't want to put it on too thick because some of these gaps actually in the tile, the, um, the filler, sorry, the primer can find its way through and end up on the front and then you've got a stain. So I'm going for four rows. Not going right to the end. Keeping a little bit short of that. So when I push it on, this will squeeze up anyway. A couple of firm pushes. You def definitely don't want to be using a hammer because it will break. Just firmly push it. Repeat, repeat, repeat. So what am I going to do now? Rather than doing what I did on the last one, just trim off that edge. I'm gonna stagger the joints. I'm gonna have different size pieces. If I was to keep that same pattern, just trimming off that end like that last one, you should, with a trained eye, you will see the joint every time. Customers don't always see it, but I see it and I don't like it. So I'm staggering it by different size joints. I'm gonna put this one up first. So this joint here will be different along there. A little bit more random. It's always a better way of doing this stuff. It, it, it was unbelievably painful. So now we come to this end. Now I have to put a cut in it. So whatever the cut is, you just have to do that accordingly. So I just measured this one out, 36 and a half. This 
it's my 36 and a half. Nice little square then. Stick that on there. Mark it off. Chop, chop. One down, another one to start, a little bit more prepping with some rendering. I've got to dub out a couple of areas, but yeah, looking good. Right, let's start off with a bit of this. There we go, ah, much better. So, two sections done, Bish and a Bosch. Um, I had to dub out that corner, top left. I had to dub that corner out earlier because, uh, yeah, the wall was a bit wobbly. So I sorted that bit out. Stick the last bit in there tomorrow. Hang on, breathe in again. Oh, stick the last bit in there tomorrow. Bring some trestles round. Put the coping on and another course of bricks to go behind the top, because you can see here. we got to get a, got to get a brick in there take it up and then that's obviously going to um, carry the coping so until then that's a wrap Bish and Bosch so that's that finished so if you've enjoyed the video so far you can stick around if you want because I'm going to put these copings on the top I just cut them to go around there, so we're gonna put the ones on the pillars first, then we're gonna cut the tiles in between. So I'm plonking them on now, the top pieces. I've just had dimensions given to me by the customer. So what we're using to cement them down is, we're using the Marshalls Primer. Tight is right, it'll never come off. Testicles, test and testicles. So the actual main copings are on. So I just laid this out dry. So what I'm going to do to these tiles here, I'm going to cut a groove out, a drip groove, all the way down here. So when it does rain, water does drip down, it'll go down the groove and not down the face of the actual slate itself. <laughs> So that's what that groove looks like. That should stop any water tripping down the face and do its job properly. So there we go. Hopefully you can see the groove. That'll help any water from tripping down the wall. 
So that did its job well. So there we go, everybody. One completed feature wall. I know the top right hand side hang two coping short, but that's okay. I've got that sorted out for Monday. So let's have a look at these mitres then. Let's see. Let's see how these panned out. Tight, tight, tight. Yep, I am happy with that. That turned out really well, but it could have been better. So there we go. Yeah, like I just said, always could have been better. Quite ironic, actually. As I was just finishing up, Matty put a video up on YouTube um, showing him doing some mitres. And he had one tool I didn't have, which I am going to get if I'm going to do this again. It's like a buffer pad, like a, on a four inch blade for a disc cutter, an attachment to it, and it can rough up and smooth up edges. That's one thing I never had on this one. So that is lesson learned. Always make sure you've got the right tools first. And I didn't. But I think I did a good job of it, though. So hopefully you've enjoyed what I've done on this with the mitres. I have learned a lesson on this one. I didn't have every tool I needed. But I think I've done a good enough job with it. But can do better. You can always do better. As long as you keep pushing yourself, you can achieve better things. Just seek the advice first. I have a lot of people ask me for advice first. Absolutely fine with that. So this is all wrapped up. Van's wrapped up. Time for me to go. Enjoy the happy dance. Enjoy the happy dance.